Okay, so continuing along with our uh, faculty meeting, uh, Revit uh, creating a blend and swept blend. When you create a blend, you are essentially combining two different shapes. Say you have a circle and want to transition into a square. Creating that geometry by using an extrusion and voids would be complicated. But creating it with a swept, uh, with, a, with a blend, is simple. The only difference between a blend and a swept blend is that a blend is defined along a straight line starting on a work plane. A swept blend is along a user-defined path. Okay, so let's, um, let's go through an exercise. Both types of blends can incorporate a variety of shapes and profiles. Using the context of furniture that we have established, you will create a swept blend. You are going to create a wooden stool. To begin, create a family from the default furniture family template. You are going to create a three-sided stool, starting with the legs. When you open the default furniture family, you will be in the ref reference plane view. In this view, choose the swept blend tool from the create tab. So we're going to go file, we're going to go new, new family. We're going to use a furniture template as our family template. It's going to bring us into the reference level. So we have the reference, front, and uh, view one, which uh, has been called by default family two. Keep in mind, we have other things open. We have open the uh, family one tabletop, and we also have open the leg that we created. If I was to tile the views, right? Oops. Tile the view zoom extents. We still have the, the leg open. That's family, that C15 table leg that we revolved around. We did a revolve. Okay, so we're going to do the, uh, we're going to talk about the, uh, the swept blend and, uh, doing them in, uh, in two different ways to create a stool. All right, so from the default uh, Furniture Family template, uh, choose the Swept Blend tool. Actually, let's look at it again. Let's hover over it if we can. Creates a blend that sweeps along a defined path. The shape of the, the Swept Blend is determined by the starting shape, the ending shape, and the 2D path that you specify. The swept blend tool has its own contextual menu. You will create a path for the sweep and the starting and ending shapes. As you can see, the software first wants you to define a path. So, choose the front elevation view to start the path. Here's the front. And pick the sketch path button from the swept blend panel. Sketch path from the swept blend panel. Using the line tool, which is selected by the fault. Is it? I haven't selected it yet. Ah, there we go. Draw a uh, starting line from 10 inches to the left of the base and continue, continue until it intersects with the vertical plane at a 73 degree angle. 10 inches at a 73 degree angle. Radius, uh, well, no, I can't do it that way. I can probably tab to it. Uh, 73. Well, here's, it's a little difficult to get to. When it's going in five uh, percent increments, five, uh, five degree increments. Okay, I can hold that there. I can modify it. Grabbing it, I get its, I 
guess it's other dimension. I guess it's other radio. Uh, it's other angle. It's coincident angle, right? That's coincidence. So seventy three, they won, right? Seventy three degrees. It was at seventy when it was going uh, uh, counterclockwise. So I need another three degrees. In order to get that, I gotta bring this down to 17, right? So that should give me 73. If I was to annotate that, angularly measure it, there's my 73. So, angularly. All right, so I started 10 inches, I went towards the uh, the line. It didn't say how long. It didn't say how long. Oops, I can't do it like that. It didn't say how long of a line. So if I select a line, it said one foot two, but look in here. This one here is two foot ten and thirteen sixty four. Two foot ten and thirteen sixty fourths. That didn't bring us to tangents. It's tangent to the 10 inch marker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line in here, right there. I'm gonna move this from here to there. Because there's, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, okay, so, yeah, I wanted to make sure that it's exactly like the figure. You have a me measurement roughly 2 foot 10 across the hypotenuse of the triangle. Okay, good. Click the green check mark to accept the path. Well, let's just, before we accept it, let's look at it in a 3D view. It's a path that we can't see in three because we haven't created it yet. I wanted to see the uh, more than one. Oh, I, I uh, have this extra line I gotta get rid of. Okay. Now you need to make the base of your leg. Open the reference view. Now you need to make a base. reference view and you will see two red dots on a line connecting them. The dot on the left is the base of the leg. The dot on the right is the top of the leg. And the line between is the path you just created. Starting with the base, choose the select profile one button and then the edit profile button. Using the left red dots as a setup point, create a circle one inch in diameter. Click the green check mark and then the finish edit mode button to complete the shape. All right, so it's not going to be very, very glamorous. A circle that's one inch in diameter. So from here, a radius, this is one inch of a half inch. A radius of a half inch will give us one inch in diameter. A radius of 0.5 inches will give us a, a diameter of one inch. Click the green check mark. Sketch is empty. Click the check mark and then the finish edit mode button to complete the shape. Well, we didn't extrude it on anything. Well, sketch is empty. Did I put that? Oh, there, I haven't placed the circle yet. Select uh, the select, select the select profile number two button in the sweat blend contextual ribbon in the uh, sweat blend panel. Using the XY reference plane as the right side of the box, create a rectangle centered on the X axis, one inches by three inches. 
select the profile number two and then edit profile, right? Using the Y reference plane as the right side of the box. Well, that's the right side of the box. Well, first of all, it crosses over. It's not tangent to the... Uh, I'm looking at this right now. This isn't coplanar with the reference line. Look at this here. It extends past it. That's a, a mistake. It has to cancel out of here. Cancel. Yes. Actually, I didn't have to cancel. I could have edited the line in place. So I have to do that all again. Create, sweat blend, sketch path, line, from about 10 inches. Uh oh, I screwed all up. Create. What I break. What I break. Right. Ten inches. About two foot, when they say two foot ten? Two foot ten. That's two foot ten. I have to trim it up. I'm gonna have to trim it up. Two foot ten. But it has to be on the line, so I have to make sure I extend this. Oops, I aligned it. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to trim extend. I wanted to trim extend. Make sure this there. Now it's there. And now it's make sure it's here as well. There. Now it's there and it's around the two foot ten, roughly. All right, so as long as it's um, coincident with that, coincidence that, and its hypotenuse is around two foot ten, then we're good. Um, click the green check mark to accept the path. Now, we're going to uh, open the reference view, right, and we're going to draw those circles. Circle one inch in diameter. So we're going to have to select profile number one. Um, click the green chair. Using the left red dot, create a circle. Oh, I'm back in sketch pen now. circle, radius, half an inch, right there, oops, circle with a radius of half an inch, right there, and then hit OK, and then select profile number two, sketch path, it's highlighted, sketch path, Elevation front, right? Well, it doesn't look like it's in elevation front. It looks like it's in uh, the same view that this is in. So hold that thought. We've uh, created this circle, the 25 millimeter circle, the one inch diameter circle. We've uh, checked it and uh, we finished that editing. And we just select profile number two. We just select profile number two using the Y reference. Well, it doesn't. Uh, using the Y reference plane as the right side of the box, create rectangle centered on the X axis, one inch by three inch. You can draw the rectangle the correct size anywhere and then move it into place if that makes it easier for you. Well, Select profile number two. Edit profile. Okay, yeah, it was. Uh, that's what I missed. So we have to create a rectangle using the right side as uh, 
the y axis is the right side. We're going to uh, give it one inch by three inch, and this, uh, the rectangles to be centered on the x axis. So if I was to draw it, let's say here, and bring it up to here, and change this dimension, if I can get it, this is three inches. And then this, well, first of all, I can move this from the midpoint to, to this intersection. If I can get it there, hold on. node. I can't get it to snap. Did I move anything when I was doing that? Let me go back to how I was here. If I can get this one to be an inch, I'd, that'd be one way of getting it started. But I can't even get it. I can't select it. There, I had it there. Three inches, right? But it doesn't look like it's centered. This is one inch. centered. It's not centered on the midpoint here. This needs to move from here. I have an idea. Let's do it like this. Let me see if I can align this. Sometimes these lines are tricky to pick. I can't get the, uh, what am I, I'm not getting it where I want. Okay, well, it snapped there. And it made it there. Okay, good. Right, so that snap that came up here was going to determine where it, I guess, dynamic, dynamically snapped to. All right, so we got it where I believe it's supposed to be without a little bit of effort. And uh, it's equidistance on both sides. So we should be good. Click finish mode. Let's see if it creates the revolve. With those two profiles on path complete, click finish edit mode again to complete the sweep. You now have one leg of your stool. Ah, okay. So if we look at it from a... Uh, In this view, we can't even see it for starters. I mean, is it, it shouldn't be because it's must be the uh, visibility of view one. <laughs> anyway, I right, hold that thought. All right, so we have. Uh, let me finish it again because I undid it. We have the leg. Let me just take a... Also, it's, it's kind of a, a circle to a rectangle. Tapered, I guess you could say. All right, so let me close that view. All right, so now, I guess it's... I, I thought they were going to use this leg the, the, from the leg family that we revolved. It doesn't look like they want us to do that. So to finish the base, select the leg and choose the array tool. In the options, set these options. Choose to a radial array, leave the number of array items at 3, change the angle to 360. So uh, in the reference view, do, a radio, do an array, select the sweep, uh, number 3, make sure that it's a radial array, not a linear array, angle 360. Center rotation will be right there, I guess. Default. Let's see what it does when I do default. No, then it's over there. Change the angle to 360. Change the rotation sense to the middle of the XY reference planes. Let's see if I can snap there, right there. 
The ray is completed by accepting the number based on the next or last iteration with your settings. Accepting the number based on the next or last iteration with your settings. Okay. So, I want to take this. There should be three. Move to last. And they have it at... No. That's not going to be good. I should do that again. So we have the array, number three, radial, group and associate, move to second, angle 360. Place the um, start of rotation. And now I think I hit OK, or do I have to pick the angle? I think I have to take this and bring it all the way around. What if I brought it around there? No, that didn't do it. I'll get it. I'll get it. Array. Three. Angle. 360. I need to place the... It would have worked if I placed the uh, center of array around the XY intercept. Grab it again. Hit enter. 360, radial, center of rotation, I hit OK, and it broke again, hold on, it doesn't want to behave, I must be missing a step, place the center of the array, center of the XY, where it intersects, 360 degrees, hit tab, it should work, there it is, alright, so, we have the three, and we can change that, we can change that, if we wanted to, we can make it four, as you can see, I'm going to do it, keep it at three, oops, still there we can change it back all right so we have uh we have the uh the legs all right so the array is complete by accepting the number based on the next or last iteration with your settings you should now have a set of stool legs from this point use the techniques explained earlier in the chapter to add a round stool seat and a bar near the base for your feet uh, finish 15.44 shows the finished stool. There are a few ways to create the seat and bar. It can be with a sweat blend, an extrusion, or even a revolve. So, um, yeah, it wants us to create the uh, stool top, which we could create a quick extrusion. Um, we could create a blend if we want. We could create, a, we could do a simple extrusion. And then we just draw a circle. And its offset is, um, I don't know, let's, uh, let's give it an offset of uh, 38 inches. And let's give it a radius of 6 inches. And let's bring it down there. Let's give it a radius of 8 inches. And that'll be its point there. Let's hit its uh, extrusion, and it's going to give us a foot. We can change that. We can change that. So let's bring this down here. Oops, 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 oops. Let's change this to uh, 0.75 inches. And let's uh, extrusion start. 48 inches. You can 
right up to here. Bring this now down to 0.75 inches. Oh, it's going to bring it 0.75 inches from the reference level. Oh, I wanted to pick a different work plane. I could pick that as a work plane. Let me see what I want to do here. How do I want to do this? No, I think I'm just going to grab this and drag it down to save time. And make sure that... Uh, well, this is on an angle, that's why it looks that way. But over here at the right, where it's square, you can see it. And then it wants us to draw a ring around the bottom here. So, in elevation, if I was to draw, create, create a reference plane, and I was to come up right around there, and create a reference plane, and I was to revolve a circle around a circle. In 3D, I could probably do that. So if I was to go to a 3D view, this view for some godforsaken reason, view one isn't giving me what I want. It's not allowing me to see anything that's hidden. Um, right, so I'll just look at a regular 3D view. And what I'll do is um, I want to see the work plane. So show the work plane. Set the work plane. Pick a plane. That plane. Open in 3D view, right? Now that's the work plane. And if I was to draw a circle, on this work plane, another circle, create, uh, a revolve. a solid swept blend. I want to do it like, I could do it like this. Let me see if I want to do it like this. A sweep. Let's see if I can do a sweep on a circle. Um, pick path. Profile, and I want to do an uh, elevation left, it doesn't matter. Elevation left. Oh, it's up here for some godforsaken reason. But I wanted to draw a circle. I got it. Okay, so now. If I go, uh, I gotta go into this view, I guess. Grab it. Bring it down. If I can. Well, it's got a reference level. It's on the work plane, so I can um, possibly move it to another work plane. So if I grab it again. Um, it's gotta go lower. I could have sworn I had it on the other work plane, but I guess I don't. That's from the right, this is from the left. I can't get it any lower. I can't do it by moving it. Can I move it in elevation now that I've selected it? Yeah. Maybe not. If I was a gambler, man, I could have sworn I did it on this work plane. But I guess I didn't. But you get the idea. I don't want to beat a dead horse with this. You can practice this when you get a chance. i got to move on to the next exercise. But, uh, yeah, that's basically what it's looking for you to do to create a stool with a, a bar stool for something for your feet. And I don't plan on going on the bar anytime soon. So uh, I'm not too concerned about the, the, the railing for my feet. Because uh, you got to get into nesting families. Uh, and uh, you can't spend all your days sitting on a bar stool looking for the solution at the bottom of the glass. 
Um, so you can find the Finnish family on the Brooks website. The file is called uh, C15 Wooden Stool, that RFA. Before continuing with the table modeling exercise, let's take a moment to discuss the importance of nested families in comparison to modeling repetitive geometry all within one family. Families are used to create individual components. By combining those components, you can use a nested family to add parameters to better define the relationships between those components and best leverage the families within your project. So uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not giving up. I'm just uh, enamoring myself against risk. We have a limited amount of time. Um, so do your thing. Hopefully you're, uh, you're catching my drift.